Now, one of the most powerful forces reshaping our world is unprecedented mass migration. The wind of change that carried my own parents across the globe in the 20th century was a mere gust compared to the hurricane that is coming. Even if we concreted over the countryside, turned our cities into one vast building site and erected skyscrapers from Eastbourne to Elgin, from Hull to Holyhead, it still wouldn't be enough. Demand will always outstrip supply. I know it, you know it, and the voters know it. The decency of the British people cannot be questioned. But they also, they also care deeply about overall numbers. In poll after poll, the British people have been clear. Immigration is already too high. Too many overseas students were bringing their dependents here to the UK. So we've changed the rules to ensure that a student visa is not a route for whole families to come and live and work in the UK. And be under no illusion, we will do whatever it takes to stop the boats and deter bogus asylum seekers. Let me tell you, our country has become enmeshed in a dense net of international rules that were designed for another era. And it is Labour that turbocharged their impact by passing the misnamed Human Rights Act. I'm surprised they didn't call it the Criminal Rights Act. Yeah. All of them bleating the same incessant accusation. Racist, racist, racist. They've always used that smear. They tried it against Margaret Thatcher. It didn't work. They tried it against David Cameron. It didn't work. A couple of years ago, they even tried it against Winston Churchill, our greatest ever leader, and it didn't even work then. The next election will also be fought on law and order between a Conservative government that wants the police to focus on criminal justice and a Labour Party that thinks the police should focus on social justice. Between a Conservative government that stands up for the police and a Labour Party that wants to see them take the knee. Between a Conservative government that wants to help ordinary people go about their lives unimpeded, and a Labour Party that sympathises with the eco-idiots that block our roads and stop mums from taking their kids to school. And it's why we've reformed hate crime guidance, so that officers aren't wasting hours investigating squabbles on Twitter. It's why we're making sure the police are not inadvertently helping mobs to enforce non-existent blasphemy laws. And it's why we've prioritised tracking down grooming gang perpetrators and getting justice for their victims after authorities turned a blind eye. It's why we've made sure that Prevent, the government programme that stops people sliding towards terrorism, is focused on the main security threat to the British public, Islamist extremism. I have a particular message to those brave police officers who risk their lives, risk their lives, to protect the rest of us by carrying firearms into situations where they could be harmed or even killed. You are the thin blue line you have our support. We are grateful for the vital work that you do day in, day out. We look down on those of us who care about such things. Of course, they are entitled to their beliefs. But let's be honest, these are luxury beliefs. What do I mean by that? Our politically correct critics have money, they have status, they have loud voices. They have the luxury of promoting seductive but 
irresponsible ideas, safe in the knowledge that their privilege will insulate them from any collateral damage. The luxury beliefs brigade sit in their ivory towers telling ordinary people that they are morally deficient because they dare to get upset about the impact of illegal migration, net zero or habitual criminals. And you can be sure of one thing. People with luxury beliefs will flock to Labour at the next general election because that's the way to get the kind of society they want. What is that? They want, and they like open borders. The migrants coming in won't be taking their jobs. In fact, they're more likely to have them mowing their lawns or cleaning their homes. They're desperate to reverse Brexit. They think patriotism and embar is embarrassing and have no use for their British passport unless it's taking them to their second homes in Tuscany or the Dordogne. <laughs> for these people, I have a simple message. You are entitled to your luxury beliefs, but the British people will no longer pay for them. <laughs> There's another reason I think we will win the next election. You see, we have a secret weapon. Well, not that secret. Everyone in this hall knows it. I think everyone who will be at Labour Conference knows it too. And our friends in the media definitely know it. Our secret weapon is Sir Keir Starmer. <laughs> you see, the British people have no enthusiasm for Sir Keir Starmer. They know that he believes in nothing. They know that he will say anything to anyone and then change his mind at the first sign of trouble. Keir Starmer lacks the personality to lead this country effectively. Imagine, imagine what would happen if he became prime minister. Luxury beliefs would reign supreme. Britain would go properly woke. The British people will get to decide if they want to curb woke with Rishi Sunak or let it run riot with Keir Take the Knee Starmer. <laughs> Labour is the party of pressure groups, rich zealots and trade union activists. But you know, the Conservative Party, the Conservative Party is also a kind of trade union. Because we are the trade union of the British people. <laughs>